Hey Internet, I'm Chaz. I'm Dan, welcome to Wine of Serious Business. This is episode 312. Again, we're putting off getting to that Oregon Pinot we need to get to because Matt brought us back some special stuff hand imported from the great nation of... Italia. Yes. Uh, so so clearly, what we, we, got, we got a bunch of like uh, Nebbiolo and Super Tuscans here, mm-hmm. right? San Giovese right in the glass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's actually, it's interesting. So it's it's funny you mention that because that's actually what got, let me find this wine, right? I was so f- just burnt out. My palate was like dry and crusty from all the Sangiovese I was drinking. And not like, that it's fine. bad. Not right? that it's but, bad, yeah, yeah. but when you, you know, I was in Tuscany before this, before I got these, and that was like all we were drinking. And I was just like, I, I need something different, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah Morgan is used to weird, nerdy wines. Yeah, no, we went to this place. It was in a castle in this town of Bolsena. It's on a lake, and it's a little wine bar in a castle. And I was like, "Give That's me the cool. most non like Italian wines you can give me right now. Things that are just weird and different." And let's do it. So. And that's where I that's, that's how you put it to her. Just like, yeah, I want just, some weird wine. Give me something weird and let's just drink it. And they still have this stuff by the glass and they were like, and then they also had it for sale too. So, yeah. What would you, what would you do if somebody somebody bumped into you in a, in a wine shop in Oregon and says, I'm, I've, I've been drinking Oregon Pinot Noir for two weeks straight. Help me out. What's weird? What do I get? Give them some like orange wine from something like nice. uh, Yeah. Or it would probably be El Cove, uh, the El Cove Rosé. The sparkling rosé. That's yeah. That sparkling. It's, 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 it's Pinot Noir, yeah. oddly enough, but it's uh, it's really good. Um, it'd probably be Riesling from somebody like Trisadum or uh, oh, yeah. or, or Petra. Uh, yeah, or Petra. Yeah, I'd probably put something like that in front of them. Yeah. So. Minimus for me, right? You want, oh, you want oh, to get you, you want to get out in the weeds. You win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You want to get out in the weeds. Nobody's doing stuff like Chad Stock's doing. So, Absolutely. Or even Teutonic. Teutonic is a good. Teutonic's yeah. way out there. It's, yeah. That's yeah. very true. Yeah. So, but this is what this lady in the shop, Bolsena? Yeah, in the shop in Bolsena. Is, in this town is Bolsena. I can't remember the name of the shop. It's the only wine place in Bolsena um, that is the highest rated on trip advisor. I should look it up before we end the show yeah. and get the name of it. But cool. we'll it's a great it. place. So, basically, it's this place in a castle. Lady was amazing there. And I was like, okay, give me some weird stuff. So, so La Vie? La Vis? La Vis. So, this is weird because it is actually a Tuscan Method Champenois Chardonnay one. Blanc de Blanc. Blanc de Blanc. Blanc de Blanc. And, yeah. and Tuscany is warm, right? That's yeah. pretty unusual. This is a Blanc de Blanc from Tuscany. Method Champenois. Sweet. A little coconutty on the nose? Mm-hmm. Yeah, almost. Yeah, I was like, I was kind of uh, thrown off initially by the aroma, but yeah, yeah it's almost like a little coconutty. It was a little sulfuric at first as well, um, and it, it, it's blowing off very quickly though. It seems, which is good. I, yeah, yeah, definitely happy about that. Yeah, a little bit of like peaches and coconuts, like tropical. Mm-hmm. A little bit of citrus too. I'm in. Huh? Boy, did, did you drink these at the time, or is this your first taste? I did. Okay, yeah, okay. I've had I've had both of these already, Smart. so it's. Um, I tasted a lot of stuff, and I was like, okay, these are wow. the weird ones that I have to bring back. That's really, that's really quite tasty. Yeah. So you tasted some weird ones that were terrible, too. Then. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's, some not, there's some not good stuff. Like, I had, oh. like, a... I can't remember right of it, a lot of but I just... Oh, there's yeah. a, lot of, a lot of bad wines in Italy as well. And so Italy is, yeah, right, like, a huge range of production. They do a lot of crazy stuff, mm-hmm. uh, but, but definitely not all of it's good. I'm really impressed with this. This, this palate is, really, is just, like, lingers, too. That's what's amazing about Where it. Where do you so. think that coconutty flavor comes from? Is that like an oak thing? Like an oak usage yeast. thing? I think it's a yeast. It's got to okay. be a yeast. Yeah, this, it's in. Pr- very prominent in the nose. Very prominent. You don't really get it much on the palate. It, it comes It comes in very late on the finish. Mm-hmm. So after it's after it's been swallowed, give it like a couple seconds, and then boom, there's that flavor, right? Um, yeah. It's pretty cool that there's like that evolution though, right? Yeah. Like it's like mm-hmm. kind of like the um, r- nice, nice fruit flavors initially. But like, there's like sort of a, a dip where there's not much, and then all of a sudden this like coconut sort of richness. Yeah, it's like uh, a coconut vanilla finish. vibe going. Yeah, vanilla thing. Yeah, exactly. I think so. actually, you know, if we thinking about the yeast, I think it's actually that because that's a quality typically that you get when you leave it on the leaves for a little bit longer. There you go. That like vanilla quality, but I can see the coconut and the vanilla together. Okay. I think it's a yeast thing that it dens mm. right on that one. That's why I love having you on here, though. He's got a pretty good amount of brewing Absolutely. experience, so he's got yeah. a feel for how that goes, and, and I, I, a bit. Bit of it's probably coming out from a little little riper chardonnay, yeah, a little riper absolutely, chardonnay fruit. Absolutely, um, nothing terribly complex going on here. No, um, I mean, but that, that extension to the finish is a little bit complex, yeah, right? Yeah. But yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Like the fruit flavors are pretty straightforward, right? 
So it's interesting. It's just, it's just it's just different. Like it's not what you would expect of a Method Champenois wine. No, no, at no, all. Absolutely not. It's just yeah. different, and it's it's enjoyable. Like it's really really good. Nice easy drinking, and I love that they're doing it in such a warm region that's known for bigger red wines. Mm-hmm. Because I think this would be a great contrast or a great way to, if you're doing a regional wine dinner, right, to, like, start things out. I suppose there's there's no way to get this in the States, right? This oh, is, neither yeah. of these, yeah. Okay. Neither of these. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but, I don't know, I guess an excuse. If you're ever over there, go look for it. And the price on this, too, uh, 15 euro. Wow. Well, yeah. So that's the, the, <laughs> that's the other thing. So <laughs> yeah. 15 euro from a wine shop. So that I was, that's basically a bar. So. Yeah. Wow. Killer. Cool. That's fun wine, man. Yeah, definitely. Thanks That's for bringing awesome. it out. Yeah. yeah. That's a very yeah. generous pour you had there. Well, so wait, you don't have to drink the whole thing? Yeah, well, that's what we'll just keep it going. Keep it going. Drink um, it afterwards. So, right. So tell us about this one. Okay. Wine. This is wine. now, if we thought Method Champion Wine Testing Wine was weird, this is another level. Bianca, Bianca Tico? Bianca Tico. So okay. this, so one this comes out. from the region of, of Lazio, right? Lazio is to the, let's see if I know my geography, to the west of Umbria. Um, and then I guess to the southwest of Tuscany, right? I think technically, yeah. I don't know Italy hardly at all. So if you look at Italy on the map, there's a big lake in the middle. That's where Lazio is. So that big lake is called Lake Bolsena. And Lake Bolsena is where this grape is grown on the shores of, right? And so this, this grape is of the Aliatico variety. Very, I think they grow it in like Chile and other places and somewhere else in like other, like Southern Italy as well. Now. What's weird about this, if anybody even knows Aliatico, I didn't know until I had this, um, it's typically a red wine. And what they do is they typically press it into a red sweet wine or a red sparkling sweet wine. Right. So it's, um, that's the style of this that's, that's known for the Lazio region as well. Like, this like Lambrusco is, kind of Exactly, style? like yeah. a Lambrusco type thing. Yeah. Um, or just, yeah, or like a, you know, like a standard red dessert wine. Sure. Um, now, what's interesting about this one and why it's named aptly Bianca Tico is that it's the Aliatico grape pressed into a dry white wine. So about as esoteric as it gets from Lake Bolsena. And what's funny is if you read this label on the back, it says in Italian, it is, um, it's like the Di Riflessi Ramati, which is basically a reflection of Ramato, which would be a red grape pressed to the pressed white. I mean, sorry, a white grape pressed red. Yeah, left on the skin. Left on the skin, right? sorry. A lot yeah. of skin color going on still yeah. in the white wine even, right? Yes, like, and it's hard to... This is the opposite of a Ramado, is what they're saying. Oh, so very much like the white Pinot Noir, right? Yes. Where you yeah. can't get all the color out. Right. But it's close. Yeah. So a this cool find. almost orange wine. Yes. Right, almost orange. Almost orange wine. So. Yeah. Like a light copper or a mm-hmm. salmon or something. So this, it, is, it is perfumey. It is like... <laughs> that smells like my grandma's bathroom. <laughs> yeah, it's... Like, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's... Yeah. It, oh my it's diff- gosh. It's different, like... And that's why I wanted to grab this. It was just like this candy, weird. candy fruit, yeah. yeah. Perfume, potpourri. cherries, a little bit of gummy bears, yeah. Oh, gummy bears, yeah. Yeah, I get that. A little too. red vine action. It's kind of like I, can... I think with the alcohol, it's kind of like a Jello shot. Is what it smells like. <laughs> like it's like just floral, yeah. Could you? And this jello? is not this is not offensive, by the way. This is like yeah. it's not about it. It's just it's just weird. That's the only way you can describe. We should it. make. Could we make jello shots with this? You, you okay. could, but Ooh. let's not do that on the <laughs> <laughs> We got leftovers. Anyway. You even get a little bit, there's a slight like chemical thing comes out of there. It's almost like a um, like an ammonia or like some something there at the very, very really? end of the nose. Boy, I feel like it's just smoky. I kind of like it. From that description, you're not feeling it so much, but I think it offsets the candy wow. flavors, a lo- the candy mm. aromas a little bit. I think the perfume on it is interesting. Though. The texture is really nice. Oh my gosh. As far as mouthfeel is concerned, it is wonderful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They've got the acid dialed in. Oh, yeah. And I can totally see why this is popular as a sweet wine. Um, I kind of feel like in the uh, less wine-focused states of the United States, oh. like if you had a Midwestern winery that made this as a sweet wine, I think you'd crush it. I think you'd yeah. sell cases <laughs> upon cases upon cases. Sure. I bet you'd do all right in Roseburg with the sweet red. Based on this grape, right? No question. Mm-hmm. Right? Based um, on the wines I've seen there. Yeah, I can totally see how that plays out. Uh, I'm glad that this isn't that wine. Uh, it's just, it's such a bizarre palate. It's like, it's, the mouthfeel is crazy on it. The acid is dialed, like you said. It's got this, like, it almost has a little bit of that gummy bear taste to it, it as well. It does, and I love and, gummy bears. And it's like, you know how, like, perfume, so this is going to sound really weird, but you know how, like, perfume smells, it obviously tastes like crap. It's, like, bitter and alcoholic. Yeah. This tastes kind of like perfume smells. 
in a way. With that, huh. do you get the bitter alcoholic thing? No, 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 no. no right. No, no, that's what, sorry, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Away, away from that is like it tastes like perfume mm-hmm. smells, not like perfume taste. Obviously, right. It's like right. it's it's really weird. It's sort of like the best way I could describe it is um, if you think of like Victorian England, that's what it tastes like. Nice. That's something you don't hear everywhere. I, yeah, that's. I'm really struggling. Thing. What 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 would you say this tastes like? For other wine people out there who have never had this wine, what's the closest thing that this sits next to? So I feel like this is right in line with those like fresh white grapes with an and I'm gonna love this with like the American grape tinge. This leans closer to Niagara, I think, than a lot of other European grapes that I've had. It's got kind of that richer fruity character to it. It's got some of that perfumey character to it. It's got some of that. I already taste like grapes, though. This Soft, tastes like candy. not grapes. Not to you? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling it. Okay. It's different. I mean, I, I said this before the show, at least, and, and I, I, I'm I actually going to disagree with myself, is that I thought, when I first had it before, I thought it had a muscat quality to it. A little bit. Like, it kind of got into okay. that perfumey vibe. It's got yeah, that richy, think, aromatic yeah. thing, yeah. That yeah. part of it, yeah. But it's nothing like a muscat no. at that same time. No. It's just, yeah. That's just weird. It's really weird. That's yeah. a, that's why I brought it back because it's so weird. Like it's it's, it's never not. Had it's not that's the thing though. Is it's like not offensive. Like it's no. It's not. It's got some strange flavors. Like and I, I am pumped to have this because really it reminds me of some of the better white wines I've had in Minnesota um, from from hybrid grapes they've had there. So I'm sure some people will be all pissed off that with with that comparison. Uh, but it's it's kind of exciting to me because it's got this rich aromatics. It's got a nice texture to it. Um, and it's not really like anything we've ever consumed before. Mm-hmm. It definitely doesn't have this like delicate, elegant complexity that no, we talk about with a lot of wines that we that. love. <laughs> it's a lot of like like fun, easy to drink on the sweeter yeah. side of things. It's but gets you awesome. thinking. It's good. It's cool. good. I, I enjoy yeah. it. It's it's weird. It's yeah. There's nothing offensive about it. It's just not. You have nothing to compare it to. Like it's like it. Imagine if you had like let's say let's I don't know it. like some sort of like you know white white burgundy for the first time ever. Like right. you've never you for the your whole life you drink Riesling and Riesling is your wine that you know what wine is and then you have white burgundy for the first time. That's sort of like this moment. It's like you have this idea of what white wines are and then you have this and you're like, Oh, I've never tasted anything like that. Pretty cool. I can totally see why you picked this out too. Because it's yeah, it's a good, enjoyable glass of wine, but it's uh, it's also kind of out, outside of our own thing. Mm-hmm. And this was twelve year old. Makes sense, and I, but I suppose the sweet red versions are probably like four. Yeah, I'm sure. Right? Yeah, I, I didn't try yeah. any of the sweet red, red versions. I wish I did, um, but yeah, these were these were things that she was pouring by the glass, and uh, it was really you know, and I just wa- tried them in both, and I wanted to buy them. So cool. It's it's like m- muscat meets carrot juice and gummy bears. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love it. The, like, the carrot juice thing is like. We could make that as a jello shot. Victorian it's, France as well. Like, <laughs> it's it's weird, man. Like this, the the flavors you can get out of this wine are just my. It's weird. I love discovering things. Yeah, the, the, that are completely new like that. Yeah, it's true. Uh, the the mouth feel on it is fucking awesome. I will mm-hmm. say that. I love the way it feels when you take a nice big gulp of it. It's like silky almost. It's like a couch in your mouth. That's kind of what it is. It's just like it's it's like your grandma's couch in your mouth, <laughs> crushed velvet couch. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. That's why you guys watch the show. <laughs> <laughs> the best the best tasting notes on the internet. Thanks for watching. Wine is serious business. Uh, Matt said he had some kind of question of the day to ask you guys. What's the best Pokemon you've caught so far? What's the best? How do you, how do you no, the one that you've caught so far. They, they you know, what's your strongest? How do you yeah, your strongest. Yeah, your strongest. Your strongest Pokemon that you have in your collection right now. Okay. Pidgeotto. Yeah, mine goes my Pidgeot. Or is it Pidgeot? Yeah, the Pidgeot's oh. the highest evolution. Yeah, yeah, oh. Pidgeot. Uh, yeah, seven hundred and something right yeah. currently. Mine's a Flareon. Thanks That's for watching. Sick. Wine is serious business. I'll see you guys later. Bye. Oh boy. I can't